Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here with some more geography. Now, we got uh, Germany. Not sure if I've ever heard of this country before. You know, is it one of those small countries, you know, maybe from Africa that I haven't heard of? Possibly? I'm just kidding. Obviously, uh, Germany, big, well-known country. Uh, a lot of history <laughs> and obviously uh what i know about germany is mostly like world war one and world war ii stuff unfortunately i know you guys are very advanced and be like very smart very athletic country you guys always do well when it comes to the olympics you know and soccer and all that stuff so i know you know that kind of stuff but i really don't know like the kind of like, the geography of germany or really the politics of it or you know the other stuff i think that the world war is kind of like you know for me anyways overshadowed you know pretty much what germany is all about at least i'm hoping so i mean i'm gonna find out right so uh but anyways yeah uh very interested to see uh to learn more about this uh awesome country so let's just, just jump into it and check it out and before you please hit that like and subscribe button below please and thank you <laughs> and yeah i'm still like i just got off work just walked in and turned my computer on so i'm still like gung-ho and winding down from work so yeah that's a good thing though you gotta kind of like doing these videos when i'm kind of like wide awake and not when i'm like tired but anyways yeah please like and subscribe and yeah we're gonna jump into the videos my name is paul this guy's name is paul and the Pauls are going to, I don't know, going to take you on a journey. Like, never mind. <laughs> that just sounded bad. But anyways, let's go. All right. Leader Hosen Schnitzel beer, Bratwurst order bread and beer, oh, yeah. complicated history beer, no humor, EDM, and gummy bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like worth it. Ugh, those are such what? horrible stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. Want a gummy bear? I love gummy bears. I really do. I love gummy bears. Gummy bears. Geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So we've conquered Belgium's castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the final boss of the EU, Kingpin Germany. Level one, <laughs> begin. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, Germany is located in central Western Europe, bordered by nine other countries, don't forget little Luxembourg, with small coasts on the North and Baltic Seas, which they own about 50 small islands. Now, Germany, like the US, is a federal republic, which has 16 smaller states, or Bundeslande, each with its own constitution, three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen, which is actually kind of like two cities, including Bremerhaven on the coast, but they kind of act like one entity. <laughs> Fun side note, Lower Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Now let's jump into the fun stuff. Now we already discussed the Jungholz Quadrapoint and the Venban Railway enclaves with Belgium and Austria. However, there's a few more. The entire town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Switzerland, whereas part of the Konstanz is cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. Finally, they split the hmm. island of Usedom with Poland in the north. Germany is interesting because because every state in the country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history, food, traditions. Okay. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schwestlig Holsteiners. Mecklenburg-Vorpommern will be different from Saarland. This all has to do with ancient and recent history. Basically, in the quickest way I can summarize this, Germanic tribes, Roman wars, Charlemagne, three kingdoms, this guy marries an Italian, creating a whole new mess called the Holy Roman Empire, made up of 300 smaller separate kingdoms, states, and dukedoms, which had nothing to do with Romans. Teutonic Knights, Brandenburgs became Prussia, Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, battles, battles. Napoleon comes over and messes everything up. And finally, German nationalism surges. And in 1871, Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto German unified state. And then they're all like, oh, dang, we came late to this game. We got to scramble. For Man, that, that was a lot to take in. And, uh, you know, I understand a couple of things because on my channel, I've done like World War One. I've done the Napoleonic Wars. Uh, I'm doing like, you know, Rome with Caesar. So. I'm trying to put like those, you know, like, a few of those things together for Germany, but you know, I guess, I don't know. That that was a lot to take in. I got I got to catch up more on my uh, German history over time. You know, when we do more of these kind of like wars and history stuff that I do. <laughs> but anyways, wow, that's a lot. 
Auto in Bismarck. That sounds like a good video too. Proto German Unified State. And then they're all like, oh dang, we came late to this game. We gotta scramble for some colonies. And that's how all of these countries at one point spoke German. Oh, and also keep in mind, like 300 years before this, a German banking company obtained colonial rights to Venezuela for like 20 years. They were looking for the lost city of El Dorado. So technically, you can kind of huh. say Germans colonized the Americas, but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest thing. Fast forward even more, and then you get World War One. The monarchy ends, Treaty of Versailles, they lose land, Nazis come in, World War II, Germany splits in two for about 40 years, and then finally, we get the Germany we have today. East Germany consisting of these states is today still quite different from the rest of Germany as it was first occupied and influenced by the Soviet Union. They are generally not as well off economically as the rest of the country, as you can still see the blocky Soviet-style buildings sprawled throughout the regions. In fact, the city yeah. of Berlin was split in half, and the west side was actually an enclave of West Germany, only accessible by train and highway. You can even see from a satellite image the divide. East Berlin still uses the yellowish tinted sulfur vapor light light bulbs, whereas the West still uses fluorescent and mercury arc white tinted light bulbs. Now the funny thing is, although- uh, he, he might explain this in a bit. So is that like, a, if you live in Germany, like, do you prefer you, you prefer to live on the West side, right? Or, or maybe the East side is maybe a little more cheaper to live? Or, I don't know, considering like, you know, the, that, the, the wall's gone, everything, uh, this is kind of curious, I guess. I'm just guessing it's a, you know what do you want to pay where you want to pay to live I'm guessing the uh, the east side is a little cheaper to live I don't know you guys can let me know in the comments and I'm sure the west side is you know a little more prettier to look at because you don't have all the uh, I guess the block buildings or whatnot but anyway yeah you, let me know in the comments uh you know uh, is there, if there's like a big difference in cost or whatnot or maybe for all I know uh you know, West Germany's coming back and, you know, building a whole lot and changing a whole lot right now. I don't know. Whereas the West still uses fluorescent and mercury arc white tinted light bulbs. Now the funny thing is, although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, Munich, Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at number four. Otherwise, some top notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla, Cologne Cathedral, the cool. Ulminster Church, the tallest in the world, the Berlin Victory wow. Column, and hundreds and hundreds of castles all over. The most notable one probably being Neuschwanstein, the concept behind Disney's Cinderella Castle. Germany also has over 400 zoos, more than any other country. Hold on a second. Yeah, the, I can definitely see similarities to Disney's castle. That's cool. And you know, like I said in the other videos, if you know me, I love castles. So definitely on my trip throughout Europe, I'll definitely be, definitely be dropping by uh, Germany. Check out some castles. Um, the concept behind Disney's Cinderella Castle. Germany also has over 400 zoos, more than any other country in the world. And of course, everybody knows about the Autobahn, the highway system in which if you see this sign, it means there's no speed limit. And it's like that for a huge yeah. portion of the roadway. And no wonder, considering how vast and wide those cultivated countrysides can get. That, that must be awesome. Uh, I bet, you know, I guess like people probably have like the best cool, I don't know, I don't know probably, quality cars over there zooming along and i'm sure that the quality of the road is like perfection like maybe no potholes or nothing because man going that fast having an accident it'd be crazy i mean how's i guess uh if, I, if you got a, yes never mind you can't get a ticket really because yeah i don't know what i'm thinking i'm sorry i'm just mumbling i'm sorry let's back up but i would love to go on there and i don't know i'd probably be too afraid to go too fast i don't know like that for a huge portion of the roadway. And no wonder, considering how vast and wide those cultivated countrysides can get, time for level two. Okay, think of it this way. In Germany, the more down you go, the more up you move. Basically, Germany lies on the Atlantic Shelf in the north that starts with the mudflats in the North Sea. Seriously, this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods everything. Then everything just kind of wow. creeps up into the Alps in the south by Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, with the highest mountain, Suchspitze, located oh right God, along so the border with awesome. Austria. Kind of like France, Germany is filled with a vast irrigating network of rivers like the Spree, Elbe, Vesa, Rhine, and of course, the mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is arable and another third is woodland. And after a millennia of civilization, Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country. Most agriculture, of course, happens in the North Flat Plains and the central regions of the country, which is, by the way, kind of like Europe's tornado alley. Due to its position oh, sandwiched no. between the Arctic blasts of Scandinavia and the moist, warm jet streams of the Mediterranean below, Germany can be an atmospheric war zone in the summer. There are more tornadoes on Dang. average in Germany than any other country in Europe. Speaking of flat farmland, Germany is the world's largest rye and hop producer. Germans abso freak 
freaking lutely love their bread. There are over 300 different kinds of bread in the country, what? more types than any other country in the world, and almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or brochen of bread. Yeah, I never knew there was that many kinds of bread, period. So I'm guessing like yeah, you go to you go to a restaurant, order a meal, they probably have like breadsticks or or rolls or buns they serve you before you actually get your main course, I'm assuming. <laughs> Uh, I'm hungry. Every meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or brochen of bread. Hast du gluten free? Nein! Germans are heavy meat eaters, specifically in pork. They basically know every possible way to cook a pig. Over 50 different types of sausage exist alongside schnitzels, rouladen, sauerbraten, okay. schweinsaxe, and at a big party you might find Spanfackel. Beer reigns supreme all over as the third largest consumers of beer after the Czech Republic, even their president has no problem with public intoxication, and Austria. <laughs> Germany is world renowned for their beer, which by the way follows the Rhein Heizgebot rule in which they are only allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. Nonetheless, about 1,300 breweries exist pumping out over 5,000 brands. The oldest continuously existing brewery in the world, started by Benedictine monks in 1040 AD, can be found here. Germany takes the environment very seriously and for the past two decades has been going on a major green revolution. As of today, Whoa. they have the largest installed solar power capacity and green infrastructure practices like home installed turbines and solar panels have seen a huge surge in the past 10 years. Forests wow. dominate the southern regions where the landscape gets hillier and mountainous, the most famous one being the Black Forest or the Pretty. Schwarzwald in Baden-Württemberg. Deer, bears, boar, foxes, badgers, and the national animal, the eagle, can be found thriving in these parts. Nonetheless, economically, Germany is known mostly for their exceptional engineering and industry nice. production. Companies we've all heard of like Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Benz, Porsche, Audi, Telecom, Nivea, DHL, Bosch, Adidas, Puma, Adidas, Puma! Yeah, it's kind of like the whole Biscoito Bolacha thing from Brazil, remember? Well, we have mud flats, tornadoes, pork, beer, mountains. All that's missing is people. Level three. All right. For just $67, you can make as many videos as you want, and you never. I was going to say, just from like the pictures of the landscape and uh, just the land, you, know, you don't really think about nature and stuff when you think about journey. So that was just very pretty stuff to see. Or need to pick up a camera or use any fan. Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now, if the EU was a family, Germany would kind of be like the dad who got out of rehab, reconciled with his wife and kids, and is taking his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past every day. First of all, the country has about 82 million people and is the most populated in the EU, second most in Europe after Russia, and has the fourth largest nominal GDP in the world. About 80% of the country identifies as... I know they're not on this topic right now, but I am kind of curious. May I, may I, may I just like search that video? Because I, I think there is a video out there. I think I've seen on like recommended. I just didn't click on it. Uh, like I know you guys like through like me like like World War Two. Like I wonder how how do they teach you guys that in like history class? Because you know, do they? Because you know it's it's not a good thing. You know you know what happened, but but I know like usually you know if something happens in your country and you learn the history. Usually they make it like like a positive spin on it i'm kind of curious you know how germans kind of how it's you know the holocaust how that's kind of like taught to you guys and how hitler is kind of taught you know i don't know i think i think this is kind of curious anyways i'm sorry back we go most in europe after russia and has the fourth largest nominal gdp in the world about 80 percent of the country identifies as ethnically german 12 percent other europeans mostly polish italian dutch and so on turks make up about 3.5 percent asians at two percent and the rest are made up of other groups like africans and americans also they use the euro they use a c and f type outlets and they drive on the right side of the road germany is without a doubt a global powerhouse it is the strongest economy in the eu and makes up about 16 percent of the union's population it's the third largest exporter and importer of goods in the world Good. After the United States, Germany is also the second most popular global migration destination. Germany experiences a high standard of living, tuition-free universities, if you get accepted that is, a mostly government subsidized universal healthcare system, about a quarter is still privatized, and state pension for retirement at age 65. Now when it comes to language, nice. things get a little tricky. Each state kind of has their own type of German. However, to get by, most Germans learn how to speak. I say that's awesome, man. Like, I know, I know like you guys are probably tired of the World War II stuff, but I think it's awesome that you guys basically just took over Europe, you know, bounced back and just amazing. And you're like, just basically, you know, center of everything. Everyone wants to go there now and everything. So, man, that's awesome. Awesome job, guys.
Hochdeutsch, or High German, which is the standard dialect. The European Charter, however, protects the minority languages of Frisian, Danish, Romani, Sorbian, which is like a Slavic-based language used along the Czech-Polish border, and Plattdeutsch, or Low German, which has similarities to Dutch and is typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities across the world. In terms of regional distinctions, though, Germany is kind of divided into five cultural areas. Rhineland, East and Middle Deutschland, Norddeutschland, Baden-Württemberg, and Bavaria. Rhineland is on the west side and has a culture somewhat more influenced by France, more Catholic, Carnival celebrations are huge out here. East and Middle Germany was the part that used to be its own country for 40 years as it was influenced by the Soviets. Sorbians right. can also be found here too. Northern Germany has a coastal sea culture that identifies closer with Denmark and the Netherlands. They're also known for being kind of quiet and reserved. Baden-Württemberg has an interesting Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so thick that only about 40% of it is intelligible to other Germans. What? And then you have Bavaria, which is where the Americanized perpetuated stereotypes about Germany came from with Lederhosen, Dirndls, Half-Timber, oh Beer God. Houses, and Kuku clocks. For the record, Germans are sick of those stereotypes. It's like saying all Americans are cowboys with guns and horses. Speaking of stereotypes, some of the stereotypes in Germany include things like Saxons being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about themselves, Swabians are stingy, Bavarians drink too much, Hessians talk too much, Holsteiners don't talk enough, and so on. Words differ yeah. from regions too. For example, in High German, you would say Auf Wiedersehen, but in Bavarian, you would say Fiat die Gott. In Kölsch, you would say Tschüss. <laughs> And in Rhineland, you might say Ayus. And there's so many compound yeah. words that get really long and complicated, like Rindfleischer, Ticketierungsüberwachungsaufgaben, Übertragungsgesetz. <laughs> this is because many words are merkwürdig or ambiguous words that are kind of. I know, like before I go to Germany, uh, I'm just gonna like. I don't know. Like I gotta learn some stuff. Like I go through like some, you know, the main phrases and words to, to learn. <laughs> Anyways. Somebody shares my cat. <laughs> we continue elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations and make up words for everything. Like my favorite word, Backpfeifengesicht. Not this time. By the way, for the record, this letter makes a double S sound. However, spelling reformers have tried to decrease the usage of this letter in recent years, which has led to some protests. Germans also love hmm. dubbing everything from foreign media into German. Some like this, some don't, but yeah. either way, it's here to stay. About 60% of the country identifies at least nominally as Christians, split between Protestants and yeah. Catholics. Germany was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation split from the Catholic Church by Martin Luther. Otherwise, the rest are mostly agnostic or irreligious with a noticeable community of Muslims, mostly from the huge Turkish and Middle Eastern communities at about 5%, as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus rounding up the remainder 1%. To kind of get okay. a feel of what it's like to be German, you kind of have to understand where they've come from. After World War II, they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until the mid 50s and early 60s that the Wirtschaftswunder or economic wonder happened to which almost everybody got to work. Basically, this guy envisioned an implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism alongside socialist policies that established fair competition in a welfare state. GDP increased by 80%, investments wow. by 120%, labor forces were utilized to the maximum, things started to get better. In Germany, all children are corralled into general public schools until age 10 when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Gymnasium, geared towards focusing on higher linguistic, mathematic, and science fields for universities. Realschule, a middle ground type of school, and Hauptschule, a school that is geared towards helping kids that seem to show promise in specific vocation or trades. Germany also has okay. the largest music market in the EU and the like third that. in the world after the US and Japan. They love preserving their heritage and culture through music and art. In fact, there are around 130 national orchestras mostly supported by public money and artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through a special type of offer in the legal system. One thing that still kind of supposedly maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of Vergangenheitsbewaltigung. Totally butchered that! Which kind of translates to a lingering sense of guilt from the past. Germans have reportedly some of the lowest levels of national pride, and unless if you're at a soccer game, chances are you will almost never see anyone holding a German flag or waving it in any kind of like patriotic setting. It's weird, but it's kind of how things are. You monster! They've made great strides yeah. to move on from the past. Nazi flags and Mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to- Okay, I'm glad you just basically answering most of my question from earlier, you know, about how it's kind of taught, so, okay. Which is kind of unfortunate because, you know, you know, because that, that was a long time ago. So if like you're someone my age brought up, you know, you're proud of your country because, you know, that was your past. You never saw that or was you know, brought up with that except for, you know, learning in the past. And, you know, 
if your country is awesome right now, you know, you should be proud of it. You should be able to wave your uh, your flag proudly, you know? Kind of like patriotic setting. It's weird, but it's kind of how things are. You monster! They've made great strides to move on from the past. Nazi flags and Mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in Germany, and they even have a rule, the Volkswertzung, which basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities. Some people say this infringes on free speech, others say it's good because it solidifies truth. Otherwise, some notable Germans throughout history include Charlemagne, although he was a Frank, but eh, I guess it kind of counts. Albrecht, Dürer, David Friedrich, Gutenberg, Bach, Beethoven, Karl Benz, Albert Einstein, yeah. although Americans would like to claim that he moved to the U.S. and became an American. Johannes Kepler, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Schiller, Michael Schumacher, Alex von Humboldt, and of course Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels co-founded Marxism. <coughs> but one thing Germans do best would have to be diplomacy. To this day, the German passport holds the most visa-free nations out of any other country in the world, just beating Sweden. Therefore, you can kind of conclude that Germany kind of knows how to relate to people. Let's find out how in the final round, level four. Friend zone. Can't believe that Daniel deal you've got me on Daniel, yeah. State Farm offers surprisingly great rates to you everyone. French sure. number one. <laughs> Germany knows how to make friends. They have over 220 diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest African friend would probably be Namibia. As a former German colony way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Germans have been supporting and sharing ties both economically and ideologically for over a century. India and South Korea are really close friends in Asia. India supported both East and West Germany during the Cold War and after reunification, they were like, even better! And Germany is to South Korea what Japan is to France. They love to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures, especially in the automotive industry. Many South Koreans were sent to Germany after the Korean War to work abroad and study, and Germans nice. have been growing in fascination with visiting South Korea. The U.S. is probably the closest ally outside of the EU. About 30% of Americans claim German heritage, and after World War II, the Marshall Plan allowed the U.S. to give post-war aid to Germany, which helped kickstart the economic recovery. Germany was a key nice. figure in the formation of the State of Israel after World War II, which after the Holocaust left an obligation to invest in the building up of a Jewish community. Turkey is probably the closest Middle Eastern ally as the Turks make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany, although many of them may or may not also identify as Kurds. But since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating and are documented as such. Their best friends, however, would probably be literally all their neighbors. The thing is, Germany is kind of like Bosnia yes. and Herzegovina in which, by default, they kind of get friends based off of the regional alliances. Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden-Württembergs get along with Switzerland, East Germany has good relations with the Slavic countries, the Rhine states love Belgium, Luxembourg, and France, and the North side loves the Netherlands and Denmark. France though is kind of like the trophy wife of Germany, as the two have had an angry start, but then eventually fell in love and worked together beautifully. <laughs> France is like the beautiful flashy spokesperson for the EU wow. that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background, managing all the money and logistical work. In conclusion, although Germanic peoples have existed for thousands of years, an actual unified German state didn't appear until kind of recently, and the brief time that they've been around They've kind of gone through some of the most intense, world-revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined. Yet, they've come out working hard and building their way up to become a world superpower. You gotta give it to them. There's something about the Germans. And with that, final boss level complete. Stay tuned. Another African state Germany has ties to, Ghana, is coming up next. Wow, good job, Germany, man. You guys kicked butt in this episode. Like, like besides the history, like, nothing negative to say at all. I mean... Like schooling top notch, apparently business is top notch. You guys are a superpower now. I mean, there's really nothing bad for you guys to say, man. You guys should be proud of that, man. You know, wave those flags. Uh, but yeah, another awesome uh, video by Geography Now. Wow, this one was definitely extremely awesome. Uh, please hit that like and subscribe, guys, if you haven't yet. And definitely very impressed, Jeremy. Very impressed. Very, very good job. Uh, you know. One day, like I said, I love to love to come visit. You know, when I when I take like a trip around Europe. So, uh, any any tips for I, I for when I come by? I guess maybe learn like I guess a little bit of German, maybe. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hit the like and subscribe, and I'll definitely catch you guys in future videos. Uh, definitely entertaining and, and informative video. I loved it. Anyways, peace and catch you guys in future videos. I am out.